Hello fellow Trojans. This is a presentation on our Assigned Management Scholar, Chester Barnard. I'm Trip Whitley, presenting on behalf of Elizabeth Camps, Christine Laredo, Sakina Camerdine, and EJ Rickey from Group 3. So who was Chester Barnard? Well, he was an American business executive and public administrator, and he was prominent in the early to mid 20th century. And as we'll briefly cover today, his theories in management and organizational structures proved to be widely pioneering and influential uh, in the world of uh, business organizations. So after studying economics at Harvard, he worked for what became AT&T and then later served as president of the New Jersey Bell Telephone Company, the USO, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the National Science Foundation. So in 1938, he published his landmark book, which was The Functions of the Executive. And in this book, he examined his experience as an executive through the lens of a developing conceptual scheme in order to explain the behavior of men at work in modern organizations. So diving in a little further into the functions of the executive, uh, this book defied earlier mechanistic concepts and actually defined organizations as complex cooperative systems that are influenced by human activity, as well as the internal and external environments in which they operate. So fundamentally, Bernard believed that organizations are typically short-lived and they needed to be both efficient and effective in order to have long-term success. He defined efficiency as the satisfaction of individual motives or the extent to which people willingly cooperate depends on how workers receive executive authority and whether they're willing to accept it. Additionally, Bernard would also argue that management was responsible for setting the moral tone for his workers. And he also believed in persuasion and other non-material incentives for workers. Doing this effectively would ultimately lead to workers voluntarily taking a more active role in accomplishing organizational initiatives and goals. Once published, The Functions of the Executive had a significant impact on its contemporary audience. First and foremost, it reassessed the issues present in organizations and, and restated the functions of the executive. His theories were not only welcomed, but studied and ex executed in both the workforce and academia. In fact, it became a crucial resource in teaching organizational sociology and business theory. So his book pioneered new guidelines, and it pushed managers to think about the possibility of companies working together in order to improve, and it also opened the door for continued conversation on the concepts and topics presented in the book. So the functions of the executive proved to be an inspiration to leader, leading thinkers in many other disciplines and caused one of the most impactful movements in the business world. In fact, uh, Bernard was asked to expand upon his ideas and he published many of those in the second but lesser known book called Organization and Management. The functions of the executive was considered decades ahead of its time. And his thinking shifted the routines and tasks of the workplace and focused more on the human aspect of organizations. So recognizing that workers have their own individual interests, he identified that one of the top priorities for management should be achieving cooperation among the individuals that comprise the workplace. Now, some people um, today consider this work to be of decreasing importance, mostly attributed to his obscure writing style, which could be discouraging to students. Um, so while Everybody agrees that it's historically important. Um, a lot of scholars think that his work needs to be reevaluated and upgraded to reflect the organizational structures of the current era and with relevant importance given to the perspective of present day managers. Uh, it is worth noting that the book was also listed second in the article Most Influential Manage Management Books of the 20th Century. So, because of Barnard's influential work, today's business environment now embraces clarity on what a productive work environment entails, um, openness on how a managerial role should be viewed and executed, and also opportunities to improve the workforce and the world through better treatment of the individual. Now, researchers also attribute Bernard's work as the precursor and basis to many later organizational theories. So to name a few, uh, the institutional theory by Philip Selznick, or the decision-making school of theories by Hermit Simon, and the human relations school theories developed by Mayo in 1933, and so on. Bernard's concepts still ring true today. Organizations must function as cooperative systems in which executives, stakeholders, and other contributors work together, both efficiently and effectively, to fulfill the promise and purpose of their organization. They must also do, and do that in respect to their influence from and on 
their overall environments. So as a contemporary example, we wanted to take a look at uh, Christina's previous employer, the LA Dodgers. Um, the Dodgers take great pride in ensuring that their staff, fans, local community, and, and business partners are all treated fairly and that they're all aware of the overall mission. Uh, their employees are encouraged by management to provide excellent customer service and also to establish long-lasting relationships with their fans in order to guarantee a memorable game day experience. Uh, the organization also has many different departments and they all work cohesively, but they're all aware of a very simple goal. It's make the playoffs and provide an amazing experience for the fans and players. So in order to move towards that goal, the executive team at the Dodgers incentivizes its staff in several ways, ranging from cash prizes to season tickets to other perks uh, throughout the season. And the Dodgers excel in providing a fun and incentivized workplace. They take great pride in their community and their partners and their entire business ecosystem. Um, other examples uh, of that are the fact that they support educational initiatives that provide academic support and mentorships. They publicly honor veterans, uh, armed forces personnel and community leaders. Uh, in fact, they host military appreciation style activities and programs and honorary days throughout the year. Uh, they also support initiatives that foster holistic and healthy lifestyles. And they also promote the Dodgers Love LA Tour, which is a week-long civic engagement where players and alumni and employees join together uh, in community-based organizations. So in closing, we owe it to Bernard for the fair, positive, cooperative, and incentivized work environments the majority of us enjoy today. Uh, the result can be seen in companies that now pride themselves on having a corporate culture that's conducive to employees' health and safety and work-life balance. Um, things like team building retreats, office amenities, bonus structures, award ceremonies, educational initiatives, etc. are all seen today because of Bernard's influence. Uh, his theory also resulted in companies having the sustainability issues and initiatives that promote community engagement and environmental awareness that you see today as well. So undoubtedly, Bernard's theories proved to be a foundational building block for today's modern workplace.